training our dogs not to pull on the leash. If you have a big dog, this is definitely something that you want to teach your dog because it's no fun having a dog that drags you down the street. So in order to do this, you're going to need two things, okay? Number one, a regular collar, just a regular leather, nylon, just a flat collar, and a harness, okay? No choke chains, no prong collars. Um, as far as the harness goes, I would get a front attached harness as opposed to a harness that hooks on the back. The reason why, a harness that hooks on the back actually allows the dog to pull more weight. If you look at the dogs, um, the sled dogs that pull the sleds, all their harnesses goes in the back because they can pull more. When you have a harness that hooks on the chest of the dog, when the dog goes to pull, it turns them sideways. It doesn't allow them to practice pulling. It doesn't teach them not to pull, but it doesn't allow them to practice no pulling. So regular collar, regular harness. And the way we're going to train our dog not to pull, the end goal is that you only will need the collar, okay? But in order to stay consistent, we need a harness as well. So what you're going to do is as much as you can, we're going to train our dog on the collar. Now, when the dog is on the collar, there are very specific rules, all right? Rule number one, if the dog starts to pull, okay, you're walking the dog and the leash gets tight and you're going to have to decide what the level is of tension that you're going to allow. But when the, the tension gets too much for you, okay, you're going to stop walking and you're going to wait. You're going to wait until the dog backs up and makes the leash loose. Once the dog does that, then you can go forward. So you're going to be kind of doing this crazy stop, go, stop, go, stop, go, okay? But what we're going to teach the dog is that pressure on his neck equals stopping and no pressure means can go forward. Let's go, stop and go, okay? So it's not, it, this really has nothing to do with the leash. This has to do with the collar and the pressure that when I, this is the collar, that when I feel this, I get to go where I want to go. When I feel this, I don't get to go where I want to go. I want to go forward, I better loosen up and keep that collar loose. It's tight, I stop. The dog will take a step back, and now you go forward. So it's teaching the dog about pressure, that when you feel pressure on your neck, if you want to go forward, you need to loosen it up by taking a step back, by moving your head backwards, okay? We don't use food, we don't use treats, because the dog's reward is simply getting to go forward. Now, you do this on the collar as much as possible. So why do we need the harness then? Well, there's times where you're not going to be able to do stop, go, stop, go. So the harness is what you're going to switch the dog to. And when they're on the harness, there are no rules. You don't do stop, go on the harness. Because now that they're on the harness, the pressure is different. Now the pressure is on their chest. And because you have a front attached harness, they're not going to be able to pull anyways. Right? Like I said in the beginning, the, the harness doesn't teach them not to pull. It just uh, doesn't allow them to practice pulling. On the collar, we're actually training the dog to choose not to pull because they want to go forward. Okay? So when they're on the harness, it's okay if they want to pull. You're not going to be ruining any of the training you're doing on the collar because the pressure is different. The pressure is no longer on their neck. Here's an example of, of switching them. Okay? We're taking our dog for a walk down the street. We're walking down the sidewalk, we have them on the collar. Now we get to the corner of the street and we need to cross the street and it has a traffic light. So we're going to have a limited amount of time. Because I can't risk having to stop in the middle of the street when the light turns red, I'm going to get to the corner, I'm going to switch my dog off the collar, put him on the harness, and we're going to cross the street. So that way if he pulls in the middle of the street, I don't have to stop. Because if you stop and get hit by a car, that pretty much defeat, there's no point in training your dog if you can't walk anymore. Um, so we're going to, we put him on the harness, and we cross the street. Now we get back on the other side of the street, and we're on the sidewalk, we take him off the harness and put him back on the collar and continue our walk, okay? So 
you need to use both and the reason is so we can stay consistent. We train them on the collar, we follow the rules, every single time the dog pulls, you stop. Every single time the dog then loosens up the leash, you go for it, okay? Now, when you're waiting for the dog, so let's say we're walking on the collar and the dog pulls, and now you're waiting. And now about two minutes have passed and the dog doesn't know what to do. You have to give him a chance to, to figure out what to do, to, to back up, to move his head back. If he doesn't, you can call, you can entice him. Make some, make some noise, call his name, Max, 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 that's my dog's name, Max, come on, loosen up, just, just talk to him, and see if you can get him to take a step back towards you. The second he does, good boy, the second the pressure is loose again, you, you walk forward, you go forward, and that's the reward, that the dog getting to go where he wants to go, okay? But absolutely critical that we have both things, because if you have him on the collar, and he pulls, and you don't stop, you've just ruined about... And a uh, 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 hundred stops, the hundred stops that, and stop and goes you did, the one time that you go forward when he pulls, 100 repetitions are now ruined. So that's why it's so critical that if you think you're going to be in a situation where you're not going to be able to stop and go, stop and go, we have to put him on the harness. Like I said, eventually the, the, the goal is to eventually not need the harness. The goal is eventually that your dog pulls so rarely on the collar that you can take him anywhere on just a collar because it's so rare that he pulls anymore you, odds are you won't have to ever stop uh, in the middle of the street or, or wherever it is that could be dangerous um, but it takes practice it takes practice and it takes consistency okay so that is loose leash walking leash gets too tight because he starts to pull I just stop walking and otherwise he can pretty much do whatever he wants as long as he's not pulling